Okay, okay, I get it, guys. This is Jim the Keys bartender, and I'm back. When uh, I said okay, okay, <clears throat> excuse me, clean my throat. I get it. I said, holy shit, it takes me forever to get around to a story sometimes. I get a lot of distracted by a lot of distractions by other shit going on. So I apologize and I'll do my best to not change a fucking thing. I'm sorry to say that. I can't, you know, can't do it. You know, I got all wrapped up in that story about the windstorm Sunday night and didn't talk about what happened during the weekend. And rarely does the Keys bartender, yours truly, Jim, get to go out and sample the locations, the tourist locations on the weekends. And it's been really busy, as you've heard me say. Now it's not so much. So this past weekend, our daughter had a sleepover. The wife and I got up late, ended up going to lunch and taking a tour around. We went to a uh, a place in Amarada, uh, Hog Heaven. That's the name of it. Nice restaurant. I won't get into details. It had a great location. has a decent uh, selection of barbecue dishes and things like that. It's, it's kind of like the party place in the Upper Keys. You got Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill. You got that. You got some of the other small dive bars. And uh, that one, uh, I even forgot what it was. Whatever that. Oh, the Hog Heaven. That's that's the late night party for, you know, where you, if you're in the Upper Keys, you go to Caribbean Club. I know you get some younger people in there and stuff like that. But the demographics are a little older, I'd have to say. 50 and above. And then if you get, hey, no insult to that, you know, it's just the way it is. I'm just saying it's just the older crowd, the, the median income, income, medium age. You go to Hog Heaven, the age may be like in the upper 30s. Now remember, that doesn't mean everyone's in their upper 30s. I mean, you have the young, very young and you got some people hanging out with the very young. Same thing at the Caribbean Club. Yeah, you got some people in there in their 20s and 30s. A whole lot of other people older than that. Just the way it is. Every every bar has its style. Right? You got the college bar. Got the working class bar. The sports bar. The I drink all day bar. You know, it has the pickled eggs and the pickles, lamb's feet in there and shit like that. So I don't know how I digress. See, this is why my fucking stories take so forever. So we went to Hog Heaven. We had a table uh, at the bar and the, the wife had a margarita and another drink. And I, you know, obviously I was drinking iced tea or something. And good food. Nice, beautiful, beautiful uh, view of the ocean. You know, decent service. Didn't get really involved with that stuff. Can't give good or positive. I'm not saying... Uh, I'm giving good. It, there was no glaring satisfaction. The weird thing happened uh, several weeks before. I may have been talking about my daughter and our, my our trip into Miami to the... <clears throat> excuse me. The Frost Museum of Art and Science. Or just of science, I guess. And I was so we went out to a nice place for you know early dinner, late lunch, and I mentally noted that I am a great person for spotting the obvious location of the restrooms. A friend of mine in Philadelphia said that to me one time. He says, "Well, whenever I walk into a place, the first thing I look for, I thought he was going to say exits. He goes, "The restrooms." And I kind of thought that was funny. And then I realized, wow, it's really important to know where the restrooms are as you get older. <laughs> you, got, you got to take a piss. You got to take a piss. Or, you know, worse yet, number two, you know, taking a shit. <laughs> if you get in a bind and you don't know where it is, you, you know, sometimes it's less than a minute. Your life will change. 
Well, it's not about that again. So we're at the restaurant. It's unfamiliar. I think I was, I may have been in it 14 years ago. I don't recall. And I went to use the restroom and I walked in and I looked around and the fact the first scope, I didn't even see any restrooms. And it's an open floor plan. It's a little darker. It's, you know, it's 1230 and the, uh, it's, it's 1230 in the afternoon. So I'm scanning a place. I'm scanning for like 30, 40 seconds. Then I finally find the ladies room. It says, ladies, 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 three ladies. Let's sit over a small door. I mean, small door, a regular door. And so, look, so I look next to around there. None. I look across, directly across because it's kind of a rectangular design. No, not there. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking all the way around the restaurant. I must have made three detailed scans, visual scans of it. Didn't, didn't see it. And there's one table in there. The rest of the people are sitting out on the patio near the ocean outside the uh, hog heaven but there's one table and then as I'm looking and it's literally not more than two minutes but it seemed like a half hour this guy goes you're looking for the bathroom the men's room's over there and he points over my shoulder and I'm turning around in the corner you know literally 50 you know 40 feet from where I walked in with a clear view there's a big neon sign that says men's or men and you know in 18 inch letters I'm thinking what the fuck I said oh I guess it's a place where it says men fucking all that time you know <clears throat> you know real estate they say in real estate three three most important things are location location and life location but in first impression whew, I fucking it's stupidity, stupidity, stupidity. And I, that looks stupid. I just didn't. I mean, I look like I was in the, an escape room or door to explore when I'm standing there looking for the men's room. Guy probably thought I was lit already. Oh my God, look at this guy. 1230. He can't find a bathroom. Excuse me again, I'm going to clear my throat. <clears> throat. Wow. Well, that's not a good thing. Who wants to hear that in the years of... Uh, COVID. I don't know. So I get back to Sunday. We had a lovely time at the, at the whatever, hog heaven. And then we ended up going to this, oh man, I'm not doing this because they're not sponsors or anything like that. I just don't know their name. They're across from my daughter's school, Treasure Village, Montessori, in Isle Morada. Around mile marker 86. It's, God, I forget the name of it, but I look, I mean, I'm dropping on my daughter at the school for over three, you know, for at least two years. Was it six, seven, eight, three years? And I keep on forgetting the name of this place, but it's it's one of those gift shop setups, real kitschy. But the real big thing that stands out is the 30 foot metal lobster out front. Caribbean lobster. So it's not as threatening as the North Atlantic because you got those big fucking claws in front uh, of a uh, a main lobster. So that's the, more dangerous than a giant lobster. Even a regular sized lobster, I guess you don't want to get your finger caught by a lobster. A big lobster, who knows? I don't know how strong they are. I don't want to find out. I'm, I'm not one of those people that say, well, what wonder what happens when I stick this fork in this outlet. I kind of, I, you kind of got, when you got older, you eventually knew how dangerous that was. Now, I don't remember ever getting shocked that bad, so I guess I didn't do it. So we go to that art gift shop thing, and, you know, that's where all the tourists stop. But I've never been inside there. And that's one thing I recall. I've never been inside 14 years, driving up and down past this thing. I never go in and take a look. And they got a bunch of nice little stores. And they sell, you know, norm, normal tourist stuff. And then local generated stuff. And the stuff to make it look like it's local generated. And there's arts, you know, artist paintings. I don't know. Wow. If you stop at a gift shop and someone has a, a $500 
original, the painting. And someone says, well, I don't know this artist, but I'm willing to shell out 500 because there's a painting done in the keys. They could do that. Or they could look at it and say, oh, this guy maybe, this has a beautiful technique, guy has a beautiful technique, or lady has a beautiful technique. I'll buy this and see how, if it appreciates. Yeah, all those things. So they got those, uh, you know, I guess they have the coconuts that are painted like fish or buoys, the signs, the fucking signs, man. You get people that come into here and they got some signs. They got to paint it in a, some tropical pastel on a beautiful piece of driftwood, you know. So they paint all the way across. So you can see the letter red. So, you, you know, the driftwood's already beautiful. You know, it's distressed. Instead of you, you're just buying a sign, it's just a piece of pine. And it's made to look like it's been floating out there maybe or something stained that way. Uh Long way. That's the reason why stories stay long. Okay, so we go in there, and they have those signs and all that shit. And uh, I'm not calling it shit, because art's art, right? Someone can look at a painted coconut that looks like Princess Diana and say, that's a work of art, and there's nothing unusual about it. Or someone says, well, the lumps in the coconut makes Princess Diana look like Charles. You know, so, I mean, there's all inter- interpretations when you fuck. So they go in there, you got the those kitschy things. And then you get to this really thing, um, you know, we have that, the art, cl- you know, the art studios and stuff. And then you get to the glass studio. Guys doing blown glass. It's mainly stretch glass, you know, special design glass. I didn't see, I saw some glasses and stuff like that. But blown glass and shaped glass are different. Because you can just take it and you make different shapes out of glass and let it dry. So <clears throat> I, I didn't feel like going in there. And I was just thinking about it. Why why did I not want to go in there? I'm, I'm 57 years old. I do shit all the time that I don't want to do. Why can't I just walk into a glass shop? And then I remember I always hated going into glass shops. Any shops because there's little fucking figurines around. You know, like Hummels or Yadros. And they're just sitting in the middle, not behind a, a stationary display shelf, which I think is appropriate when you have things that are fragile and expensive. So I I was thinking about, oh man, and then I remember my mom in the summertime we were we would spend time at our family's cabin north of Philadelphia. North in the in the sub in the rural area of Bucks County, and it was near New Hope. And New Hope was a New Hope was a art community, but maybe not in the nineteen seventy one, seventy two. You don't want to, um, you, you you know, you're a woman married to a guy in the Navy, and you got the, your kids, three kids out. You're not going to go to New Hope. It's kind of like a hippie place, but across the you know the river is Flemington or Lamberville. Flemington's nearby too. And Flemington, they have a glass, they had a glass factory and made special design glasses. I mean, glasses, not eyeglasses, just, you know, statuettes and maybe some bowls and stuff like that. I wasn't really a, a fan. They said, we're going to a factory that looks at glass. And then we walked in there and there's all this stuff that could break. I don't know if I broke something there, but if anybody said, hey, where should I take my precocious seven-year-old or eight-year-old that always seems to get in trouble? You know, for a fun time. A glass factory is not the place you bring them. You know, it's just, hmm. It's just, you know, you just go there and say, don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. That's like saying, please touch. That's the opposite of a please touch museum. You walk in there and say, hey, listen. See this thing? You can't touch any of it. And that's that's why you can't have kids in a really nice museum. But then again, they put the Mona Lisa behind glass because of that reason. Because at one point, I think someone t- painted it, tried to paint a mustache on Mona Lisa. That's total bullshit. Oh, while we were there, so we're there. It's beautiful. It still has in the background of the... I'm not, I don't remember the name, and I'm not going to put it in the thing. They're not sponsors 
I'm not concerned about it, but you can find it. It's right near, it's right uh, south, a quarter mile south of, God, it was right on the tip of my tongue, I'm going to say, a quarter mile south on the bay side, south of Founders Park in Almorada. Mile marker 86, right across from Treasure Village Montessori School in Almorada. It's a fun place. So we go into a shop, a gift shop, and uh, the wife and I, and she's looking around and stuff like that. And then finally she finds a bracelet she wants. And there's this young boy, and he has a gift card. And the lady says, you're, you're back again? He goes, yeah, I just want to get another gift. I got this first gift from my mom. This is for me. So he gets these, you know, bought a bunch of gifts for his family. And now he's trying to get something for himself. And she goes, well, you don't have enough for a gift card. You, only, you don't even have enough for one of these on your gift card. And I didn't realize, you know, how much. But it, it looked like it was going to be a matter of 10 bucks. It turned out to be like 10 bucks, 10 dollars 50 cents. But I told the lady, I said, I'll give them both of them. I'll, I'll cover it. She comes up, she comes up, and uh, he, she takes the money off of his gift card, and then I give her the rest of the money. I'm standing next to Abby, and the kid's like in shock, which I understand is a strange guy. You know, you see, he never the kid must have really been told like, "Hey, someone comes and offers to pay for your thing, just don't take it." And if you do, you know, and the he kid says, "Well, I'm going to take it, and I'm going to run away," and that's what he did. Some weirdo just bought my thing. He says, did he say anything? He said, no. He said, pass it on. And, you know, that doesn't work. I guess it doesn't work with kids. But my wife was in between us, and the lady, the kid was out shopping by himself, and the lady behind the counter, she said, oh, that was so nice. And she decided to give the uh, bracelet to my wife, which was nice. You know, that was that was sweet, too. Kind of like a pass it on thing. And I said, you know, I knew what it's like to have a kid, you know, a little kid, but I wasn't, I was selfish. I would, I would never waste my money on buying things for other people before I bought things for myself. Yeah, that's, I mean, I was a nice kid, but I was a little bit selfish because I never thought about doing that. I I could have been more giving instead of like taking for that. So, but I'm not self-flagellating myself. That's like beating yourself. The guys that run down the street and beat. So I did my good deed and stuff like that. Probably got called out as a pervert. So what were we talking about? The typical um, tourist. And I was also thinking about how we uh, deal with employment down here. And on one of our uh, great fans, uh, Sean brought up in a previous episode, the, the topic for it was about tipping, but it's about earning a living down here in the Keys, right? Where if you're in Key West, you'd be lucky to get an efficiency for $2,500 a month. That's one room with one bathroom for yourself. And if you get one below that, that's a pretty good deal. A lot of times, you know, it's couples go in on something like that and they find it a bit easier. It's still, still quite, you know, and, and a lot of those people, when you work so hard, I understand down here, if you're working multiple jobs, you're eating out all the time. That's an added cost. The people that have really great jobs that, and I'm not blaming them for having really great jobs and making $2,000, $3,000 a week. But, you know, at the end of the day, you can go home, you can decide to eat and stuff like that. It's just an added savings. You can also pay for a nicer property. So, the thing is, I see advertisements for, like, mechanics and um, electricians. And it's just electricians talking about coming down here. That, that was one of the things that spurred the conversation. Someone says, $27 an hour. I'm not a, affordable as a single man. Not a, it's not affordable for me to come down to the Keys and live. And you know what? He is correct at $27 an hour. That would not work as a single man paying for all your bills and stuff like that in the place that he's accustomed. If he's one of these guys that can live in a tiny uh, camper you know, with questionable, you know, restroom facilities. <laughs> it's more power to you if you can live on, you know, $800 a month. 
that's still, you know, if you're in, outside of Birmingham, Alabama, I'm imagining a nice apartment costs around, let's say that's outside Birmingham, 800 I'm going to go with 800 bucks outside of Birmingham. And uh, you can, if you're any listeners down there, I know there's a, we have a couple of listeners in Alabama. Just send me a response at jimmykeysbartender.com and tell me if I'm right or wrong. But you got to think about when you're down here, how much you're going to use for housing, how much is going for transportation, how much is for food. And then you have the other things that a modern life has, and that's cell phone, internet, cable if you intend to spend any time at home. I know people that don't have any television at home and seem to be always out. Or, you know, always out with the people. And so what are you doing? Oh, I read. You know, that's it. And I'm like, wow, okay. That's that's interesting. I mean, I'd have to be, my eyes have to be in excellent shape or probably worse shape right now if there was no TV because I'd have to read all the time. I don't necessarily want to be talking a lot. People think about that. Like 300 years ago, these wealthy people, they didn't have a bunch of naked French maids running around and stuff like that when they got older. They went into a library they built with shitload of books, sat there, smoked a cigar next to a candelabra full of candles and read their book and drank some brandy. That was pretty much fucking it. So, I mean, people are always looking for, like, an entertainment. And the, the, that those novels that people collected were the TV of that day. So here we are, back about how much you're going to spend on your housing. So down here, you know, we're making 27 an hour. That's a, a thousand bucks a week. 20, you know, no, thousand eighty. Get your taxes taken out, maybe 800. You, if you're lucky down here... You have to have Medi- Medicare, your income tax taken out. You go home with 800 bucks, And that's four weeks a month. That's 32. Total take home. You'd be very fortunate to find a place for around $1,400, $1,500. So you're spending close to, I'd say, 40 45%, about 40 in between there some, on your housing. So let's you get a sweetheart deal at 1400 a month. And let's say you pay 16 that would be kind, 1600 and all utilities included, except for uh, perhaps cable. or So but you're still you're going to have to pay for your cell phone and all that stuff. Usually that's for some people. You can maybe get it down to 40 50 dollars a month there. And for the other things you need, another 200. So there's at least $1,700. That leaves you $1,500. 350 a week for eating. And you just work a couple hours some night. So you can make, whether they pay you time and a half or something like that, and it's 40 bucks an hour. So you make 80 bucks, and then you go out and you spend 50, 60 of those bucks having a couple of drinks and eating food because you're too tired to go home and make, you know. Put something in the oven. Just want to sit and eat. You pretty much with the tip and everything at the end of the day going out. You blew pretty much whatever you would have made because you're thinking, oh, I'm going to treat myself tonight. That's just the way it is down here because you're down here a lot of time. There's not a lot of things to do other than go out and drink or work. And there's, you know, fishing. So these the best job for people down here to come down, people are willing to get to do something they love to do all the time is go fishing, go on and working on a fishing boat and coming back. You're not you're not paid that great, but you're doing something you love. And a lot of times you can hook up with someone that you know you could pay, throw six, seven hundred bucks a month and they're they're just mainly eating fish and getting, you know, living off the tips and what they get paid. But for people like mechanics and and skilled workers down here, you go, you're a mechanic someplace else, and that's a pretty a pretty great vocation to have. It's still a great vocation down here, but what happens, it causes, it makes it very difficult. A lot of mechanics down here uh, live with someone else who's working full-time or they work on the mainland, in the Upper Keys. They live on the mainland. 
and I can understand like you're going to want to pay if you're going to pay a mechanic properly then you're going to have to you got to pay for your the real estate you got to pay your taxes and your supplies and everything like that unless you're one of these guys that work in his own shop and have someone else you only have family working there it's always a thing especially in the it's just it's more expensive I mean, it's, it's more, you have to offer more to people. You still want to make your profit. And there's some places that make profit on fewer people than the other people do more volume. And volume is, you know, sometimes they don't do a short of job, with, I guess maybe with volume. But usually in the cases, you know, some places that make uh, less money on more people and people that try to make a lot of money on a few people. And keys down here, they make a lot of money on a few people. That's why you can get, you know, a two-one down here, a two-one house to buy on a piece of land that's a little bigger than the house around it. No, I mean another same area as the house, twice the area of the house. So half the house, the rest is the lawn. You're lucky to maybe like 380, 400, 400 maybe right now, 415, 415. Go a lot of different places in the country, 415 will get you a lot better. I'm not talking about places like San Francisco, Manhattan, Chicago, Middle Bucks County, Pennsylvania, or Long Island. I'm talking about South and Florida Keys, questionable you know, infrastructure and everything going down here. And people are... It's not a golf course you're on. You're on a place that's prone to... Um, <clears throat> the keys are definitely prone to a lot of drought. It's the way it is. Most of the land. But, so people put up with a lot. They're either in subpar housing. Or, you know, they're in small housing. Or they're in group housing. You know? And then there's people that are pretty well off and they get, you know, nice rentals and, or stay with family or something like that. Or have purchased their own properties. And, but this year, with all the real estate going and stuff like that, it's just that's so much harder. Because first, people are converting their low-end rentals. They're saying, well, I can get more for the property than I'd ever get for rent. So down here, it makes sense just to get rid of it. It's amazing that there's still rentals down here when they're getting, at some places, they're getting $300 a night for a place that normally any place else in the country probably wouldn't get 125 So that's what we're dealing with here. So it's really hard to get people to come in there and do it. It's hard to get a bartender to come down and say, well, listen, you're going to get paid. We're going to put you on, well, let's say, a probationary period of three months. <clears throat> You, now you come down here now they're probably going to get people coming down here applying for jobs they needed people like a month and a half two months ago that's when places needed people you can just go down the line and eventually you know you go to four different restaurants one of them would hire you you'd be hired within a day and now people coming down there's all these extra people working and it's going to slow down and they're going to be looking for hours so they're, they're going to come down here and they're going to say, well, listen, we'll give you three, four shifts. And, you know, and you're, you're going to get the worst shifts. So it's going to be like, you're going to bring home 700 bucks. Your rent's going to be 1500 bucks. Yep. Rent's 1500 bucks. Easy, easy, easy. So, yeah, you're going to be working two, three places or living on someone's couch and paying um, 600 a month for the luxury of sleeping on someone's couch. That's the way it is in paradise right now. I'm sorry to say that. I'm being truthful about it. It's never going to be a show where people are going to tell you something differently. And it's getting harder. There are places are hard. They're offering more money. There was several weeks ago a well-known restaurant in Amarada offered uh, was offering $15 an hour for a dishwasher and uh, a bonus for staying 60 days. I don't know 
anybody that's willing to stay for sixteen hundred, you know, for a little extra money for sixty days, is willing to leave right after that. Because that's a calculated thing. You'd have to time it like a couple days after a paycheck, and say, "Hey, listen, but you're not going to get if you leave. You're not going to, you know, whatever." I'm not saying they do something like that, but you got to be careful. I guess. After 60 days, someone's not going to leave or something like that. I guess that happens a lot. People come into work and they just leave at the end of the day. I did that for a job, one job in particular. It was for a newspaper company in northeast Philadelphia, inside the city limits. And this was a neighborhood newspaper. And it was, everyone would either... They would give the paper to everyone, but they'd also say, hey, listen, we give it to you, so you're going to have to give us some money. And people just take it and throw it away, throw away the envelope. So these, uh, but I think every week they issued a newspaper, and it was just things in the crime blotter. That was it, mainly the main, main thing. This car was broken into this, this, this. A couple, I don't ever remember reading it. And I used to read the Philadelphia Inquirer every day when I was in high school. Well, this guy dropped me off. He says, drop it off down these two streets. And as these two streets went for, um, gosh, that was in, in the far northeast. And those streets went on for at least a quarter mile to a half mile. And he gave me a one mile route to drop off. And there were, some of the houses were twins. So there was sidewalks up and down and then walking in front of them and then going up and down a couple um, sometimes up just two stories but not mainly one one story up doing that a couple hundred times and the, at the end of the day they were paying something like a, I, it was like Napoleon Dynamite money and when Napoleon Dynamite goes and works for the guy to move the chickens from one cage to another that's what this was like that's yeah that that's what that was like and then at, right at the end I decided hey Don, I wait a second I cut someone's lawn and that took me an hour and a half and this guy wants for me to work five hours and I just walked away and luckily the guy never saw me in the house so he never and back then if you didn't call up you never so I just left the newspaper. I'm thinking, man, this guy, I, I, I don't even know if I delivered all of them. I left some of them there. It was like, um, gosh, I guess, I, w- I guess I was getting like a, a set of two pennies of paper or something like that. Because it was bags and bags of papers rolled up. And there was someone that did that. And I'm like, wow. It's pretty good. I guess that's pretty good. But to, yeah, to make, or maybe a little more than that. I don't know how he made money doing that at all. I don't know how these newspapers still make money. They can They get people and say, "Hey, listen, you're going to pay. You're going to pay for this. This is good." Like the the local paper, the Publix. I'm looking one one right now. Multicolor. I mean, people do look for the. They go for the supermarket thing. But these other ones, I mean, I guess there's certain select people that look at the other ones because I never look at the other ones. I only pick up the one and I look for like four things. Coffee, red meat, cheese, vegetables, and fruit. That's pretty much it. Just kind of, but, I mean, I don't know how people get like things like that. They say, oh, okay, put it in there. We're getting these... You know, newspaper ad, and it's going to cost you five hundred dollars a month. Well, five hundred dollars a month, you'd have to get for a medium-sized restaurant. You need to get around fifty to seventy people to come in who would otherwise not come in at all, and that's a month, fifty to seventy. To even up. And you probably have to do like 100 to break even. And that's 15 to 20 people a day. So I don't know how to get anybody to advertise out of season. Because I can't see. 
But I mean, it's a possibility. I don't know. The bigger the place, the more likely it's going to happen. People see a big ad, full page ad, Jimmy Johnson's. They got to be paying a thousand bucks a month or something. But they get to deduct that too. So I mean, in the long run, you got to get more money coming in than you pay out. And that's for mechanics and bartenders and everything. And coming down here to work, it's like, if you're coming down here to have a good time, party, and blah, 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 do that, you're probably going to do well. If you're coming down here to make your fortune, unless you have a new idea, unless you're going to be one of those people like at, in Deadwood that sells picks and shovels to the miners and pans, that was a great one, or selling paint to the, the brothels and the gambling uh, houses and stuff like that, lumber, and all those things. They're the people that made real money and they just went from place to place. That's what you do. You service the people that are there taking advantage of the boom. And that's happening here. And that's things like Uber Eats, Uber Lyft, people coming in, temporary itinerant people on the bartenders and servers are very, they move around a lot. There's a couple of them I know that says, I've worked here, I've worked there. You know, people that work in resorts, they usually go all around. They're kind of like flight attendants when it comes to something like that. They go to different places and that's what they do. Uh, a lot of bartenders do that. I, on the other hand, am not a, I guess I have a certain value as who I am. But I'm not the kind of person you're going to feature at a place, an exotic bar, and me going to tell people and say, tell a joke like, knock, knock, and they'll say who's there, and I'll say, go fuck yourself. And they'll say, yes, he's a rude bartender. <laughs> no, that's, yeah, they're not going to, they're not going to put it. I, um, that joke was from the guy from the, the, the FBI guy from Catch Me If You Can with Tom Hanks and Leonardo DiCaprio. So I'd like to thank you for listening. This is Jim McKee's Bartender. Remember, if you are coming down here to have a good time, you're not going to be, some people make their fortune down here. Other people, they make fortunes for other people. So be careful if you come down here and be mindful that you're, you're probably here just to have a good time. Be careful while you're having a good time, too. And that goes for people that work here. And you can, you know, you never know. You could be one of those people. I'm going to be a dive instructor. I'm going to be, and I'm going to work on a dive boat and do that for a year or two after they're done college or before they go back or after they get out of the military and things like that. Well, enjoy it. Live with people. Make some bad decisions, not too serious bad decisions, you know, you don't want to be one of these things following you the rest of your lives uh, and come down here but yeah, some people come down and I've seen many people say, well I'm, I do this and they struggle the whole time they struggle the whole time so just be careful and have an exit strategy when you come down here or be very frugal that's the name of the game right now. If you have any questions or comments, please send them to jimmykeysbartender.com. Here's a little music for you. I'll be coming back. Bye. <laughs>